Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. If you have a basement full of Gucci gear and that basement is your mom's basement, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. Hey y'all, we're working on a series of videos. Uh, in this video, we are going to be taking these, um, these Challenger necks or the double cutaway guitar necks that one of them is for Cheddar Kung Pao and we're going to be taking them from this um, step the last thing that we did was we put radiuses on the fretboard. We're going to be taking them from this step. You can actually see the line on there and we're going to rough cut out all of this stuff that is not neck material. Um, in the other set of videos that I kind of alluded to, we're going to be doing kind of the same thing but with daily driver necks. So it's very similar but uh, a couple of the tools are a little bit different. So the uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut all this meat away and I've got a bunch of these guys to do uh, so we're going to fire up the bandsaw. Uh, one thing I want you to pay close attention to is these holes here that we screwed the guitar neck to our radius jig are going to get cut away. As you can see here, this one has already gotten the treatment and there are no screw holes. You can also dig the inlay on this one. Um, this is the very first Challenger with trapezoid inlays. They're a little different. So I've got... Um, I've got all my necks are marked with, uh, I've gone like an inch and an eighth from the, uh, from the edge of the binding here to the, the back and then five eighths on the headstock. We're really just going to hack away a bunch of material. Um, we're going to sand the uh, back of the headstocks on the, um, the old man machine and we're going to uh, shape the contours of the necks. We're going to do on uh, my beloved pin router and the uh, deadhead sander. So uh, this might be one of those things where, you know, I don't know how much neck stuff I want to do today and I kind of want to let these guys rest after I hog a bunch of material off of them. But um, well, we're just going to go through this step and then through the miracle of TV magic, uh, the next thing you might see may actually be tomorrow or the next day. So enough with the bullshit talk. Let's fire up the bandsaw and let's start making sawdust. Okay, those last four necks were mahogany, and the bandsaw made really short work of those. Now we're going to cut this black poison wood neck for Cheddar Kung Pao. Um, it's not going to be any different, it's just going to be that the saw is going to labor a little bit more because this is so much harder. So I'm going to set the camera up in a couple different places and uh, we'll get a few angles and uh, we'll go from there. I'm also going to hook the vacuum up this time. This neck is finally starting to feel a little bit more like a guitar neck. It's not so ridiculously heavy now. Um, and check out the uh, the grain pattern on this. This one this one's going to be a really cool neck. Um, so uh, it probably is going to be worth all of the hassle that we uh, that we put into it. Um, so let's see. Actually, you know what? It wasn't too bad either. Uh, cutting this out with the bandsaw. This Chechen is really good wood to work with. It saws pretty easily. I mean, it's not mahogany. Um, if you guys have your bandsaw and it's set up to do this, make sure your tension is right. Make sure it's nice and sharp because what can happen is your blade can start to wiggle and wobble like this and you won't get, you know, a nice, a nice even cut. But um, hey, just for fun, let's weigh a couple of these things. Okay, I got two necks here. The one on the top is um, the all mahogany unit for the double cutaway and the one on the bottom is Cheddar Kung Pao's Black Poison Wood neck. Now, these are essentially dimensionally identical or very, very close. You can see we've cut both of these guys and they're pretty damn close. Let's just go ahead and weigh them just for fun. Here's the all mahogany unit. And 24.35 ounces. And here is the Black poison wood neck, 37.4 ounces. You know, it feels a lot heavier than it actually is. Um, it's definitely solid. Okay, the next step in the process is going to be to clean up this back edge of the headstock that's been rough sawn on the bandsaw. 
as you can see there, I mean, it's, you know, the holes for the tuners haven't gone all the way through yet. It's not to its final dimension. It's quite a bit thick still. It's going to be just over a half of an inch when it's all said and done. So to do that, we're going to run that through the old man machine, which is essentially, if you haven't seen the video on the old man machine, it's a homemade thickness sander. And the only thing we use it for is headstock thicknessing. Um, for these necks, we put the necks in going this way and we sand this edge and it, uh, it establishes our volute, which is very cool. On the uh, fender style necks, we do the opposite side. We run it through so that the face gets that cool swoop that everybody's used to. Um, because we already have our fretboard on here, um, what we have is a little jig with some pins in it and the necks fit on there and they run through the machine. Um, it's easier for me to just do it than it is to describe me doing it. So let's check it out. We're gonna do all of them at the same time. So we're gonna set the, the old man machine height and we're gonna run them all through and then we're gonna lower the, uh, or actually we're gonna raise the table, lower the cut and run them all through. So they're all gonna be the same when it's all said and done. cool part about the old man machine is that unlike a thickness sander that you buy that has a tread that keeps going, it just has a, a smooth table. So you can push the piece in and pull it back out again, which makes it perfect for doing headstock thicknessing. Now, um, as you can see, I took a little bit more of a cut here than I need to and I had to back it off. But um, you can see we're, we're establishing our volute here. And uh, as soon as we get this down to thickness, we want the point of the volute to be right under um, the nut and because uh, that's the way volutes are and um, and when we shape this let's see if we get this in the picture the volute is going to kind of come like so and this will all be shaped by hand or by the deadhead sander but we're going to get to that later on in the video so I got like five more of these to do and they all have to be to the same thickness, so I'm gonna do that while y'all drink beer or do whatever it is that you do while you're watching YouTube videos. Okay guys, um, like I was saying, this is going to be part of a series of videos about how we take necks from the, uh, the way they were when we first started to, um, ready to ready to glue into the bodies. Um, I was thinking about doing that in one long video and I'm like, man, I hate editing really long videos. So we're just going to go ahead and call this good. So today, as you, uh, to wrap up here, if you will, uh, we went ahead and we removed a bunch of the material from the uh, bottom of the headstock as well as the bottom of the neck here. The, um, the headstock is more or less the, the proper thickness and we ran it through the old man machine so it looks really good. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to chuck this up into our um, jig for the beloved pin router and we're going to establish the contour on the back of the neck. Then uh, we're going to take this over to the, um, the deadhead sander and we're going to uh, really start to make it look like a real live uh, guitar neck. So, if you have any questions about any of the tools that we used today or any of the processes that we used, uh, please go ahead and leave us some questions or comments in the, uh, in the section below. I love reading y'all's comments and I hope that I get to everybody and I answer everybody's questions. Um, you know, if I don't, uh, feel free to send me an email uh, or, or send the comment again. I try to get all of them, but uh, sometimes a few of them slip through. So, uh, keep leaving comments, guys. I really like it. And you can also do that on our Patreon page. Um, if you like the video, give us the thumbs up, and if you appreciate content like this, speaking of the Patreon page, you might want to go over there and check it out, and uh, you know, even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring videos like this to you guys every month, because we do not accept any monies from YouTube. Um, you know what? If you can't do the Patreon thing, we totally get it. Um, but what you could do is you could share this video as many places as you possibly can. Uh, oh, Ian reminded me too that I'm supposed to tell y'all to hit the bell, whatever the hell that is. 
Um, apparently, every time you click the bell, an angel gets its wings or something like that. You have to ask Ian. But uh, if you're on YouTube and you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, click the bell. Whatever the hell that means. So, uh, guys, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. I